Okay, so I'm going into this. Oops, I'm going to this assuming you're pretty familiar with linear functions. That's your linear function. Right. All right, you're starting with a. That's a starting value, or what you called it in grade ten. If you didn't realize it was a starting value, you called it the. What would that be for that graph if we graph that? The y-intercept, right? The y-intercept is the initial value. If we try and draw a graph of that thing, let's use a calculator because that's the technology you have probably in front of you. Okay, get rid of those two equations. Uh, we got 100 plus 50x. If I set up the window, probably I'm going to go from, let's go negative 2 up to 12 or something. Who knows? It's good enough. Uh, how high was it going? Something like that. Okay, so there's your, there's what that function looks like. You have an initial value at the y-intercept of 100, and okay, you got this value right here. This is 100, and this the other thing just means for every one over. You're going up 50, right? 1 over 50 up. It's the same slope no matter where you look at it. There it's up 1 over up 50. That's what a linear function is. The slope is constant. This is the, this is the slope. Uh, for the other one, though, for an exponential function, how are we going to write an equation for this? I'm going to look back up at the values here. From there to there, what did we say we did? On the spreadsheet, what did I do on that spreadsheet to get it to show that number? Yeah, I, I took the previous one and multiplied it by 1.1. And then I took the previous one and multiplied it by 1.1 times 1.1, right? Every time you're multiplying by 1.1. Again, as over here, you're adding something. So all this, all that the function says, you know, when you say, when you say 100 plus 50 times x, what you're saying is, if I want this one, I don't want to go through and count how many times. I'm just going to say, to get to there, I have to start with 100 and do 50 times 10, whatever x is, right? It's the same thing here. You could, If you wanted the one for number 10 here, you could just take the starting number and repeatedly multiply it. But what would be the shortcut? How could we write an equation to get directly there? How many times have you multiplied by 1.1 to get there? Yeah, 10 times, right? So it's like, it would be like 100 times 1.1 times 1.1 times 1.1, right? And so on. If we wanted the 10 one, it would be, like you said, 100. What would be the shorthand for that? Times, whoops, what's the shorthand for that? Times 1.1. Um, now it's not going to be times 1.1x because that would be that would be uh, timesing by 1.1 then timesing by x, right? If x was 10, this would be 100 times 1.1 times 10, right? That's not what we want. We want a whole bunch of 1.1s here. What's the short end way for doing that? This you can write as all those 1.1s you can write as I better keep up my time sign to the power of x times 1.1 to the power of x. How many dots here? How about if we do this with brackets? Probably the safest way there. Okay. Writing it is writing that exponential expression. This is repeated multiplication. Okay. Repeated multiplication is exponents. All of this is there. Okay. An exponential function is going to look like this. Y equals something times something to the power of something else like that. It's the same idea here. This 100 is the starting value. Starting value. Unless we shift it left and right, like if we shifted it, but we're not going to do that for these situations. And this has to do with, this is not the slope, but it's the it's it's kind of the rate that it's growing or, or decaying at.
You can't really talk about slope because the slope's different at every point, but it's the same thing. It's affecting how steep the graph is. In the same way as the in the same way as a linear function, it affects how steep the graph is. The larger the number, the more quickly it goes up. If uh, when it's uh, greater than one, it's growth. When it's less than or equal to one, but bigger than zero, not like equal to one. What am I talking about? When it's less than one. I should say when, I should say rate. When the rate is greater than one, it's growth. When the rate is less than one, but greater than zero, it's decay. You could put down that when it's equal to one, it's just a horizontal line. Okay, look at this on the calculator. Okay, so we're going to change it from a linear function to an exponential function. Here. We're going to start with 100. We're going to multiply it by 1.1 to the power of x. I'm going to keep the same window that I had before. I should have actually kept the other function on there too. <clears throat> okay, now that that isn't curving very much because 1.1 is not very big. If I change this to a 2, which I will temporarily here for a second, <coughs> like we had before, now it's going to go up really quickly. Okay, the bigger that number is, the more rapidly it goes up. Uh, I'm going to put both the functions on here and you can compare them. The other one was starting at 100, so starting at the same place, but 50, 50 every time you go over. Okay, this amazingly blazing fast technology graphing that thing. Okay, in this case, the linear function's above that one. If I go far enough to the right, though, the fact that this one is curving up and getting more and more, what's eventually going to happen here? Yeah, this one is going to catch up to the other one. If you're multiplying, multiplying is always going to catch up to adding no matter what you start with, even if it starts slow like that. So instead of over, going over to 12, we'll go over to 50. And we'll go up to, I don't know, 10,000 just to be safe. We have to wait for this, again, blazing fast technology. Okay, that's the exponential function. Eventually, it kind of ramps up like that. It's not a constant slope. Eventually, that one's going to take over, even if it looks like it's starting slower. Okay, eventually, it catches up. All right. Can you draw a quick graph of that thing? As you work through this uh, tutorial, look for connections between what the graphs look like and the problems that you're looking at. Okay, how does this affect what the graph looks like? Just the same way that you were expected to know that for exp or for linear functions. If the slope was positive, you know, it went up to the right. When the slope was negative, it went down to the right. Something growing or decaying, getting bigger, getting smaller. It's going to be the same kind of thing here. When this value is, it's not positive, negative, but it's when this is bigger than 1, you have exponential growth. When you have it smaller than 1, you're going to have exponential decay, and it's going to go down like that. Some of you, I think, were shaky on the, what those things were in when we graphed exponential functions, but you can hopefully make some connections here. Okay, we will. Let's turn to looking at this problem. Maybe we can represent it with a function.